Welcome to another episode of Pacifist Percent, a show whose theme song, if it had one, would be Shaggy's It Wasn't Me. Wasn't me. We return now to the mission Minor Turbulence to find Franklin, who is seemingly unable to access the interiors of buildings. Thank you for calling Rockstar Games, technical support. Michael isn't faring any better, as he too is stuck on the phone working out his own issues. Hi Michael, Modest Pelican here. Ah, oh, hey. What do you have to say about your enjoyment of my content, but not spreading the good word of my channel? Nothing. Nothing to say about that. But Michael, it's important that you- Amazingly, the only person who's managing to productively use their time is Trevor, who is flying to intercept a plane full of guns with the help of his trusty sidekick, Ron. Do a barrel roll! As you can see, for extraordinarily stupid reasons, I find myself in the air with a bunch of Mayweather goons. I have limited options, and sadly waiting for them to jump out of the plane for the greater glory of pacifism isn't one of them. So I have no choice but to move forward, which causes all the cargo to flee like everyone did when I forgot to lock my basement. This cargo further inspires the goons to vacate the premises, so the game now begins. How can I get everyone to embrace the sweet freedom of the open air with the limited cargo that I have. Simply running to the front of the plane will maybe 25% of the time cause the first sets of goons to leave, but the final two enemies are too far back and there is no cover that will protect me from them. Oh, kind of sneak in here, but it's not going to be enough. I can climb stuff here, it's just not sufficient. It's an invisible wall. Bloody invisible walls! Ah, you son of a bitch! Invisible walls! No! So I only had to deal with two guys, but Trevor wasn't being helpful. He both forgot how to climb ladders and how to take cover on walls. But it gets worse. He couldn't even Grand Theft an auto. How do you forget how to Grand Theft the autos in Grand Theft Auto? It's in the bloody name. So anything I run past will begin to fall out the back. The one exception is the final black cheap on the right, which will never fall out, but taking cover on it means the final two enemies can kill me. I'm perfectly in cover, dude. No. No. I can't sit on the last sheep without dying. Oh, I saved this sheep. That's good. Oh, they all died. Okay, well, that works. The more cargo that falls out the back of the plane, the greater the chance that the early enemies will die. But sometimes, this jeep wasn't necessary to take care of them all. My plan, therefore, was to wait on the back of this jeep for the two remaining guys to shoot enough that it explodes, killing them, but I would survive with my special ability. But alas, things are never that simple. After waiting a long time, I begun to worry that their angle of fire was not sufficient to damage it in the right parts. I'm concerned about doing anything that will cause the jeep to leave. And they and they need line of sight to be able to shoot me. Well... Should have just continued doing what I was doing. And now I'm fucks. Fuck. It seemed that taking cover too far on the left caused the jeep to move. I had no choice but to try again. Hey, call the police. Hello, this is 911. What emergency service do you require? Oh. Thank you. Police officers are en route to your current location. I am skeptical that that is true. <laughs> Eventually I got tired of waiting, and so I wanted to test if the vehicles could even blow up when shots. Oh! This at least suggested that the issue was where the enemies were firing, because the vehicle would only explode for me when I shot the engine. Although I still have my doubts, because Rockstar sometimes makes vehicles only destructible by the player. 
But I mean, how am I going to get them to shoot the engine? We need to confirm if this other one can be blown up as well. No, come back. Come back. No. I need you to test things. Please. No. Look at the flashlight. You would suggest to turn on the flashlight. Why? What is this flashlight going to do for me? Woo! My puzzling over whether the NPCs could destroy the jeep was interrupted when I was given a gift. This weighted companion cube will accompany you through the test chamber. Please take care of it. Okay. So what now? It turned out that taking cover away from the front of the plane would cause the two remaining enemies to approach me one at a time. If he moves over, then the other car can crush him. You euthanized your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject on record. Congratulations. No! Ah, uh, you didn't die. And what would I do with the other guy anyway? That at the very least would mean I only have to melee the one guy as opposed to the two. Which is a small improvement. My time was then spent restarting over and over trying to keep a box while having all the early enemies fall out the back. It was a small chance each time. So I got one. Oh, oh, let's see the box. So I think, I think that is as best as we can do. But I am not one to leave a stone unturned. I had not ruled out the possibility that moving the enemy in front of the final car would allow him to blow it up just like I did. Alternating taking cover at the front and back of the plane allowed me to move his location, but this was not without risk, because taking cover on a slowly moving box is not really a stable thing. Ah, uh, no. No! Do you have any idea how unlikely it is to have all the early enemies and cargo fly out the plane, yet I still be left with a box, and then that box still remain after another jeep and guy fall out? It is very unlikely. Are two people lived? How? Okay. Oh, uh, what the fuck are you doing here, man? Fine, you can have the box. <laughs> Asshole. Step one, get a box. Step two, put your dick in that box. Wanna get you something from the heart. No, don't leave me box. Yeah. No! I need to hit him and not take out my box. Oh, are you kidding me? No! You fucking lucky prick! Okay. Why are you? I hate you. I hate you so much, man. I see you. I, I hate everything you stand for. So regarding Okay. Okay. How long is it going to take this guy to move, though? He keeps running into the back of the car. You can see him up the top there. He's bugging. I have to go up there and save him. Oh, no, you son of a bitch! Oh, he's taking cover on nothing. Perfect. Destroyed. Fucking deleted, son. Not sure what he took cover on, but good for him. Another pacifist related accident. How do they keep happening, man? There's fire here. What the hell? 
Oh no! Why did he dive? Why did he dive? No! Eventually I got everything set up and managed to move the last enemy backwards and forwards in every position possible to shoot at the front of the jeep. Let's pretty sure I moved him a little bit. Alas, regardless of where I put him or how many times he fired, he still could not blow up the jeep. I think, chat, I'm just gonna have to melee him. You want me to blow up this car and have it go into him. Is that really better than melee though? You're just gonna die to explosion at this rate. Are you for real? That's unfortunate. Having spent four grueling hours in the small box that was the cargo hold of that plane, I was not too thrilled to be moving into an even smaller box guarded by the pilots. So I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing this with this guy. Howdy, friend. Okay. After finding myself unable to activate the console, or move the pilot, I concluded that the only thing I could do was to melee him. Have we got a pilot on board? That was a lot of effort, for not a lot of gain, chat. Hey, you wouldn't shoot me down anyway! They shot me! And so sadly we add two more melee kills to our total at the end of this episode. But good news, my main goal right now is finishing this series. I have recorded most of the rest of the game, so all that is left to do is edit it into episodes. This will mean that I will hopefully release an episode every week, but content from my other series will likely suffer, as Pacifist takes the most work by far. I would therefore really appreciate a like and maybe sharing the series around if you wouldn't mind. I hope you're doing well despite the hard times. If not, I hope things improve for you. Have a good one.